So we're gonna pull a nail on a really special barrel today. This is our Furious Midday Orange wine. And this was the first wine that we ever released at Superstition. So what we first do when we're pulling a nail to get a sample out of this barrel is we're gonna hit this stainless steel nail in this head stave with some isopropyl alcohol. So it's killing any potential wild yeast or bacteria that we've got. And occasionally, you're gonna build up this negative pressure in the barrel and you're gonna to have to actually pull up on this, this silicone bung up here. And if that's the case, same thing, we want it clean, sanitized. So that is done. And then what we do is uh, we just kind of hang out for a minute. We let this dry because when we pull our sample from the snail, right now you can see it's still wet and we don't want to have our glass if it does touch there, if you know some drips come out, put any isopropyl alcohol into your sample because that's going to change the way that it smells and tastes. So Furious Midday, there's this, this myth from Scandinavian countries where Lady Midday would, would visit the farmhands that were that were kind of overworked in the summer heat and she was she was blamed as the cause of heat exhaustion and even even heart attacks that would happen back in medieval times and so we thought that it was kind of neat to have this this character this sort of like evil goddess in a way on our label which was really kind of neat for our first wine to come out so the artwork's beautiful on it uh, there's it's kind of like woodblock print black and white and orange, simple colors, but really bold. We used a nice papery feel label called Strathmore. And then with, with this, we did something really different. We took this wine that we've already re released most of, but we wanted to barrel age some of it. And when it comes to orange wine, it's really unique. It's one of the more popular sort of trendy styles of wine these days. And when you make white wine, what you do is you squeeze the grapes and you get the juice out and then you ferment it. When you make red wine, you, don't, you, you will squeeze the grapes, but you'll ferment on the skins and that's where the color from the red wine's coming from. So when you make an orange wine, you're gonna make a white wine with the technique of making red wine. So you're actually gonna age it on the skins. And the skins of white wine grapes are usually green. And over time, as those skins break down and oxidize, it actually, creates an orange color. And so when we talk about orange wine, while you could ferment orange juice and, and make orange wine literally from oranges, we're actually making orange wine from white wine grapes. So let's see how this is looking, how it's smelling, how it's tasting. And we may have, no, this is literally the only barrel of this. And it's actually really cool because when we, we took this orange wine, we wanted to, to pair it with the right barrel. And so this is in a snowmelt barrel. And so when we got this barrel, it was Missouri oak with nice thick grain, which is gonna, it did impart a really assertive oak character to snowmelt, which is uh, Chardonnay, wine grapes, and honey fermented together. And it's kind of like a Chardonnay on steroids, just amplified, not a buttery Chard. We didn't do a malolactic fermentation that creates those buttery notes, but an assertive oaky Chardonnay, uh, sort of like a late harvest wine. And so, you know, that's been bottled a while ago. And then we had this barrel though, at the same time that this wine was ready to go somewhere. And so we, we took one of those snowmelt barrels, dedicated it to this, to this orange wine, thinking that the complementary flavors that existed in this barrel prior were, would, would really benefit this. And I love our orange wine in the bottle. It's not for everyone. It's weird. It's bold. It's kind of crazy. But I sent a few bottles to some friends in Northern Europe where it's the most popular style of wine today, and they loved it. So let's see what a barrel is doing to this orange wine. So we're ready to pull this nail. So I need my trusty hammer and I have my ambassador or superstition mead glass sitting just to my left. All right, that looks like I can finish pulling that out on my own. Another thing that's unique about orange wine, and I am actually gonna vent this bung to get a little more flow. There we go, there's a healthy stream. Another thing that's interesting about orange wine is 
you let it age on the skins for a long time, months to a year. We let it age on the skins for three months in this case. And what that does, it extracts natural sulfites from the skins of the wine that help it resist oxidation for long-term aging, but it also imparts a tannic structure and a mouthfeel that you otherwise wouldn't have. So when you drink a white wine, usually the flavors are crisp, kind of like a lager in beer. Crisp, refreshing, it's served chilled. And in a red wine, usually you're gonna drink it more at you know room temperature or approaching room temperature. And because we let it age on the skins, we did get an oxidative character from the wine, which is part of the style of orange wine. Quite often, vineyards are making orange wines that are made with wild yeast that exist on the skins. It's part of the whole natural wine movement. Now, we did use our, our mead yeast on this, so we wanna do things in our own way here at Superstition anyways, right? Why do everything that's happening around the world the same way? We wanna do things differently. And again, this is probably one of the first wines aged in a mead barrel anyone's ever even thought of, and very well may be the first wine aged in a mead barrel ever released. Let's see if it's ready. You can smell the tannins straight away, and it, it, there's an aroma that you just don't get with any white wine, even though this is technically a white wine, right? Made with white wine grapes. In this case, orange muscat and Sauvignon Blanc from the Mendocino County American Viticultural Area, or AVA. That is opening up in the glass as I swirl it around, having it mixed with the air around us. It smells tropical. There's a minerality in there. It smells like limestone. And tropical, but like muted tropical tones. You can definitely get the alcohol, the 16% ABV after all. A little bit of honey in the aromatics that no honey went into making this, but there was honey in the mead that was in the barrel before. Again, really subtle, but it's present. Let's see how this tastes. That is bold. I mean, it's like, almost as bold as the craziest red you've ever had, but it's a white wine. I'm getting notes of guava and like stone fruit skin without the stone fruit. Like if you only, if you like peeled a peach and only ate the skin, but didn't actually taste that classic peach juice flavor. And my tongue is tickling right now with the tannins. Wow, I think that, I mean, right now this is probably 66, 68 degrees. We're about room temperature. We're just in, in our barrel room here. I would wanna enjoy this chilled like a white wine and I would wanna let it warm up and approach the temperature it's at right now because it would be crisper and more refreshing if it was maybe 50 degrees to 55 degrees. But this is really crazy. Outstanding, I mean, the flavors in here, it's unlike anything I've ever had. There's a lot of alcohol, there's a lot of tannin. Again, that the minerality in the tropical notes becomes more expressive in the flavor profile than the, in the aromatic profile. Some things, when you, when you try them like this, they taste different than they smell. This really tastes like it smells, like the aroma and the flavor are totally coming together. So you get what you're expecting, which is a big, bold, boozy wine, but yet everything is really balanced and in harmony, in part because of time, in part because of this barrel. I know what snowmelt tastes like, because it's one of my favorite things that we make. If you, if you didn't know about snowmelt, like you probably wouldn't be able to pick it out of here, but I can, I can get it a little bit. But this really is so bold that I think that the barrel's contributing some layers of complexity without really being able to pick out the fact that this was a snowmelt barrel. But I think we did a really good job in choosing the one barrel to age this mead barrel aged wine, our very first wine that we ever released. And when this comes out, 
with a very limited bottling. I think, I think it's ready actually, so I have to do a little label work. So back to the graphic design table. Cheers. <laughs>